Welcome to Impact, where immigrants and Americans discuss America today. I'm your host, Pamela Anchang. On today's show, we will be exploring how the spirit of resilience in immigrants enriches and impacts America. And to do that, we have multi-talented artist producer, Cuban-born Rodri Rodriguez. She's president and CEO of Rodri Entertainment. And mark this, she's a producer of the famous Mariachi Festival USA, considered the preeminent Mariachi Festival in the world. So welcome to Impact Talks, Rodri. Impacto. Impact. Oh, Impacto. Brought to you by Pamela. And Jang. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Gracias, gracias, gracias. You know what, though? Let's get serious. Your story, I read a little bit about it. Can you just tell us about your journey to the United States? Because I always want our listeners to get a feel for the caliber of immigrants that we're dealing, we're talking about that really make the difference in this country. Tell us in a you summary. You know, especially, Pamela, all yes. of your millennial fans that Mm -hmm. are listening because they don't really they're not aware of things that happened back in the 60s but the largest exodus of children to North America happened in the 19 early 1960s 1960 to 1962 Mm -hmm. and those were children coming from Cuba's approximately 14,000 kids 1% were 10 years and younger and I had just turned seven and the reason that happened is because Castro opened up what was called the Freedom Flights at the time. Mm-hmm. So the Catholic Charities and the CIA opened up the program in Miami. And so I didn't land in LAX like, like my gentleman friends here did. Yes. But I landed in Miami, mm-hmm. and uh, it was uh, one of the last Pan American flights to leave Havana, Cuba. And we were in a refugee camp. And many of the kids that came, their parents were wealthy, so the parents were here already, mm-hmm. or their parents came immediately thereafter, and so they picked them up at the camp. Right. Others, my parents were poor. My dad was a carpenter. My mom was a seamstress. Mm-hmm. And they were not able to come out. Mm-hmm. We didn't have anybody here to pick me up, so wow. they had to disband the, the, uh, all the uh, homes mm-hmm. and the apartments in Miami, the refugee camps. And they had to start placing kids in orphanages and foster homes throughout the United States. And so I landed in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where I stayed for seven years till my parents came out. I don't have a memory Mm -hmm. of what happened in the refugee camp. And I suppose when I need to know about it, it will will appear and it will come back. Um, But you do a lot of cleaning of of that wound because you want to live whole Mm -hmm. as an adult. And... um, And so I talk about this part of my life only because it has empowered me tremendously to be more grounded, to heal, because it's very important to heal and understand and Mm -hmm. own all of that, as painful as it might have been, so that you can then talk it. So let me ask you, given how you came and what's going on now, and I'm only asking this because your story is very similar to some of the circumstances that children in the, at the borders right now are, are facing, going through right now exactly going through can you relate with any any of that very much and it's very painful and it brings back a lot still my memories haven't broken as to as to what exactly happened to me but it's uh, you know a, a very young child when a mm-hmm. child is that young they fragment yeah. and so they really don't know what politics is they don't know what exactly. a foster home is they don't know anything other they just than understand that adults are being cruel or being kind Correct. And, but they don't understand why they don't have their mother and their father Correct. near them. So oh. the, the biggest fragmentation occurs with abandonment. Mm-hmm. And so that's going to be a challenge for those kids to come back together again. And it, it'll catch up somewhere, it'll, somewhere. So let's take, let's take go to your leap of faith. So you go through all this. You have such, a, like, I like what you said. You do not look at setbacks. How do you go from all of that? How has been your trajectory from that time till the the fact that you are the founder of the Mariachi USA Festival, that is legendary. Well, my life has been sort of a, I don't know. I, How did I, you I come about a, that? What, what my gives life you that itself, joy? Because that's a joyful thing. Well, it's been, it's been a melting pot of mm-hmm. being at the right place at the wrong time or being at the wrong place at the right time. <laughs> I started in the Latin music industry here mm-hmm. in Los Angeles yes. and worked for a record company for approximately two and a half years. Mm-hmm. Um, I headed up A&R here in Los Angeles, and I was telling the gentleman earlier that I was the the lady boss to three men. I headed the Miami and the Puerto Rico office out of L.A., and I found out that all three of them, uh, they were older, older than I because I was only 19 years old. Yes. They were all making more money than I. Mm-hmm. So I stuck it out probably for another year or so, mm-hmm. and um, that's when we had the little... You know, the, al- the albums and the, the, albums. the 45s. Yes. And uh, I learned everything there was about the record business and uh, concert production. Mm-hmm. And then I decided to go on my own. And That's... I've been on my own ever since. 
That's so amazing. So how did the mariachi festival come about? Well, for a long time I was traveling to Mexico, taking American X. Okay. There, mm -hmm. Miles Davis, Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughan, Eric Clapton, Brian Adams, David Bowie. Uh, so the jazz world was very much a part mm -hmm. of my industry in producing concerts in those places with these artists. Yes. And I got bored. <laughs> I got bored and I got burned because the right. road will really kill you. Yes. And so I wanted to stay alive, basically. I didn't do the drug scene. Mm -hmm. I'm Thank not an alcoholic. <laughs> and uh, and so I decided that I was going to anchor back in L.A. And I looked around and looked what I've always followed in my passion because right. I've got to be so immersed in everything that I live what I do because for me it's not work. I was going to ask you, for how me it's do joy. you make, convert your passion into a leave, you know, something you can leave on. How did you do that? It was easy for me because I truly believe that you've got to entertain the soul. And for mm -hmm. me, that's entertainment from the heart to entertain people is yes. my number one rule that I live by. And so when you do that and mm -hmm. you're, you're transparent and you're true mm -hmm. to that, then everything falls into place. Money does, does become secondary. It does pay my mortgage. Yes. But for me, it's giving the people what they want. And we need to make people feel because people now have forgotten what it is to feel. So That's they pay true. me and say, Rodri, we're going to pay you yes. so that you can make us feel for five hours until we, till we meet again. That's got to last mm -hmm. us for a whole year. Yes. And I take that seriously. Yes. Now, you know most immigrants when they get here survival. So we do all kinds of jobs, and we have all this. All of us oh have my God, passions. Yes. <laughs> we all have passions, right? We, you know, some of us go into nursing because we have to pay the bills, but we don't really want to be a nurse. Some of us do all kinds of things just to survive. How do you? What can you tell someone that has this dream, but does not know how to go about it? Well, the good thing about today is you've got the World Wide Web. Okay. But there's so many self-help. Mm -hmm. You know, you can ask Alexa and Google just about anything. Yes. And if you don't want to be a nurse, you can aspire to be a surgeon. And the, you can mentor. There's so many mentorship yes. programs out there. Mm -hmm. It's a very different world we're living in, Pamela. Yes. Things that seemed impossible are very possible and very That's real. True. The support groups, even for women. That's I mean, true. I basically was in a genre dominated by men for a very long mm -hmm. time. But you surround yourself with people that know more than you. Correct. Yeah. Those very, are very important. That equal. You're the, always the one, the <laughs> smartest one. You can love everyone. <laughs> But you need to surround yourself yes. so that you can grow. Yes. You know, I'm just so amazed. I'm looking at this uh, Mariachi USA. What is your most prized accomplishment thus far? Being my mother's daughter. Oh, <laughs> that's so awesome. She's in here in the studio somewhere. She follows me she everywhere is. I go. Her and okay. my dad. She had blessed memory. Absolutely. Oh, she rests in peace. It was, uh, <laughs> it, it's uh, amazing being yes. the daughter of uh, Cuban immigrants that came to this country mm -hmm. against all odds. And, uh, of course, my next mm -hmm. big thing that I, I'm very excited about is the Mariachi USA Foundation. Mm -hmm. For 29 years, okay. we've been giving grants to after-school programs so that kids could learn Mariachi. Yes. Now, a lot of those kids that started with us 29 years ago are the professionals that I have on stage. So I'm growing yes. my own product, and I'm growing my audience because it's the grandkids and the great-grandkids of people that started going to the bowl 30 years ago. Yes. So, t you, I mean, you're a leader and advocate in the, especially in the Latino community and beyond, might I add, because I know about the Mariachi Festival. I want to know from you, though, what contributions, not what contributions, how do you think Americans appreciate the contributions that Latino culture has brought to this country? Do you think they really do? Well, or I, even understand I because of what's going on? But we are the Americans. Thank you. You know, we're not the majority. We are general market. We've been general market for a long time. That's true. And it isn't until you go perhaps into the Midwest somewhere where they see the color of your skin. And mm -hmm. it's not that I'm suntanned. You know, <laughs> I'm probably the lightest within all my Latino friends. Right. But it's not about what happens here in Los Angeles. True. And so when you say Americans, but I am an American. Correct. And now, sadly, I have to carry my passport when I go to Arizona and Texas. That's sad. You know, and so those are those I'm so concerned because I went to Austin and did my show there. Mm -hmm. We were expecting 10,000 people and we only had 3,500 people because ICE was actually following school buses home oh. to see where kids would get off. Yes, and then they and would so, go and raid the houses. So yes. People were afraid to come to my show. But we made a statement. Our political statement is louder than words. It's music. It's about culture. It's about the culture of a people that were here long before this was America. Yes. And although I'm not Mexican, mm -hmm. I certainly feel it because it is an immigrant issue. It is an immigrant issue. Like you said, it's not about the color of your skin. America is built by immigrants. You exactly. said it. We are the And Americans. we are Americans. 
Thank you so much. And we're much. not going anywhere. <laughs> Are we? You no, know what? No. <laughs> one more word. We're wisdom. Here to one stay. more word of wisdom. What to you is success? How do you define success? I find success every morning when I wake up and I'm thankful that I've my universe has given me yet another day yes. to make better than the previous day. Yes. And I'm into happy moments. Thank happy you. moments. And, you know, there's challenges yes. and there's lessons that I've yet to learn. And on a daily basis, you know, I, I learn them. But it's with joy. Yes. And at my age, I'm like, don't F with me because <laughs> I'm, I'm here to have fun and I'm here to motivate. Yes. And remember, very important, remember where I came from so that I can more clearly see where, where I'm going. going. Because as you said, DNA has a memory. Oh, that's a good way for <laughs> us to end on this note. So when's the next Mariachi Festival? It's June 20th of 2020. And a good chunk of our tickets are already sold out. Oh, my Yes, I'm a marketing genius. You know what? I'm just going to say <laughs> this. The woman is phenomenal. So <laughs> Thank you so much. All the information you. that you want, go to mariachiusa.com. Yes, mariachiusa.com. Wonderful. And we're on Facebook and Twitter and everything else. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you, Pamela. You're so awesome, and I look forward to you coming back on other issues, women and all whatnot. Oh, gracias. Children. Very inspiring indeed. Thank you for sharing. And this is Impact on KPFK 90.7 FM. I'm Pamela Anchang.